Hi everyone, we promised you a tech talk, kind of like a TED talk, but with nothing profound to say. So a tech talk is going to be talking about one particular technical aspect of what we do on SeaVenture. So this first one is going to be on fuel management. Hi, I'm Rosie. And I'm Jim. And this is Cruising SeaVenture. We hope you enjoyed our new intro that just played. In case you're wondering, the close-up pictures of the grizzly bears, the whales breaching, the icebergs, all photographs we've taken on prior trips between Seattle and Southeast Alaska. So before we start the tech talk on fuel management, a little disclaimer. We are not experts at anything. Nothing. Uh, so I don't want anyone to watch this and think we're providing some type of expert advice, in this case on fuel management of an ocean-going powerboat. This is simply relaying our experience and what we do on Sea Venture. There might be a better way to do everything we show you, or just showing what, what we do. So don't think of it as expert advice, just us sharing our experience after about 25 years of boating between Seattle and Southeast Alaska. In this episode, we're going to talk about fuel tanks on Sea Venture, buying fuel, the fuel filters, our fuel burn rate, how much we're using, how we keep track, measure, and record the fuel. Why we give up to have so much fuel? And what can we do with all this fuel after all? All right, item one on Sea Venture, the fuel tanks. So Sea Venture has four fuel tanks. Our total capacity is 2,150 U.S. gallons or 8,200 liters of diesel fuel. So fuel tanks come on boats, uh, a whole bunch of different materials steel tanks, iron tanks, all different kinds um, and, and uh, you know in different access and all, you know so I'll just tell you about Sea Venture so not that all boats are like this in fact I, I venture to say most boats fuel tanks are not like Sea Ventures we have uh, fiberglass fuel tanks that are integral to the hull that means the outside of the boat hull uh, below the it's actually mostly below the water line is the outside of the fuel tank. So the fuel tanks themselves are about one inch thick fiberglass. The outside hull is an inch and a half of uh, solid fiberglass. Um, and so those tanks become part of the structural component of Sea Venture. They're epoxy lined, so fuel cannot uh, seep into the fiberglass material. Each tank has two 24 inch diameter inspection ports that can come off so not me but if you're a skinny guy or gal you could climb inside the tanks uh, actually and uh, to clean them and inspect them and so that's the fuel tanks on Sea Venture. Buying fuel when and where. So at least in the Pacific Northwest there's lots of places to buy fuel and now it's easy to Google you know fuel prices and for whatever area you're cruising in and you should get all the marinas and the different fuel prices. You can also get diesel marine prices online pretty easily for all over the world. So you can see where and how much fuel is readily available. For Sea Venture, we look for two primary things because of our capacity. One is we look for a large volume discount and we look for high speed pumps. So if it's a pump like at the gas station that you do your car in, it can take hours and hours and hours to fill Sea Ventures 2160 gallons or 8200 liters of fuel. Um, but uh, we buy fuel here at Anacortes in the uh, San Juan Islands because they have uh, both, they offer a, a 
volume discount, a significant discount, about 50 cents per gallon usually if you buy over 750 gallons, and they have a high-speed pump. Your ability to handle a high-speed pump is not just about the inlet hose into your tank, but just as important as the vent hose out of your tank. I don't know why so many boats are built with big vent, big inlet hoses and little tiny vent hoses. Um, but uh, fuel can only go in at the pace that air can go out. So uh, those are both two inch inlet and vent for on Sea Venture, two inch hook lines. So we can handle the large hoses. So we can take on about 500 gallons per 30 minutes we're able to pump into the boat. So that's how we decide to buy fuel uh, but otherwise, it's just a matter of looking for the best place, looking for places that do a reasonable amount of volume so you know you get clean fuel and all those kind of basics in buying fuel. Fuel filtering. So many filters. So on Sea Venture, the fuel comes from the tank of our choice. We control that with a series of valves and then goes to the Raycor filter. So we have twin Raycor 500s. They allow you to choose which of the two Raycor filters the fuel is going through. It allows you to switch filters on the fly uh, with the yellow handle that's in the front of the filters. They also are equipped with a vacuum gauge which records the amount of vacuum required to pull the fuel through the filter. As the filter gets clogged, the required vacuum would increase. You would see that on the gauge and notice which filters. After it goes through the Raycor filter, it goes through two additional filters on the starboard side of our engines before getting to the injector pump. The end result is I think we have very clean fuel getting to the engines. The Raycor filters come in different micron sizes from 2 to 30. We use the two micron filters in there because our fuel in the tanks is actually quite clean. Uh, there's very little uh, sediment that gets into them and here we'll show on the video what the filters look like right now, the 2 micron filter that has 177 hours of cruising and there's just a little bit of discolorization from when the filter was new. But uh, So that's what we do. The filters I believe that are on the engine are actually a higher micron filter but uh, to change those it kind of makes a mess of fuel. The engine can't be running. You have to bleed the engine. So we try to get all the fuel filtering done primarily at the ray course and then the one on the engine is a backup and that's how we do it we've never had any issues with it though a big part of it is having clean fuel in the tanks and clean tanks to start with as well fuel burn how much fuel do we use on Sea Venture we have twin Ford Lehman 120 horsepower engines and they burn at 1500 rpm combined 3.15 gallons of diesel fuel per hour it's a relatively small amount compared to most power boats, really almost any power boats, especially a twin engine power boats. But uh, that's what we burn. It gives us a great range. Uh, we keep track of that, and we'll go over in a sec how we keep track of that. But so that's a 3.15 gallons an hour. We have a 16 kilowatt Northern Lights generator that the amount it burns depends on the load on the generator, but it averages about one gallon per hour. So that's our fuel burn rate on Sea Venture. Keeping track. How do we measure and know how much fuel we've used and have on board? We have two methods for tracking our fuel. One that you're seeing now is the standard dipstick method of measuring the fuel. This tells us how many inches of fuel is in a given tank. We then go to our tank chart and it tells us for each inch of fuel in that tank how much fuel there is. And no, no two tanks are the same even though the forward two are shaped pretty much alike and the stern two are shaped pretty much alike. The measurements are slightly different. Uh, it was a lot of work. You can figure it out how, how to know how much fuel is in each tank. But uh, so this gives us a physical measurement amount. Method That's method one. Method two, using our fuel burn rate in our hours and our daily log. I'm showing you a sample of it here. You can see that we can track the number of hours burned of generator and engine time multiplied by the fuel burn rate and we track the hours. We cross-reference these two. Uh, sometimes they're off a little bit. You know, the fuel measuring, the dipstick method. You know, if you measure a three-eighths of an inch or a half inch off, it would be like 20 gallons different. So 
they're uh, often within 30 or 40 gallons, but keeping in mind that 50 gallons is basically 1% or so, I think we're good to go. And so as long as they're relatively close, we know where we stand on fuel. Okay, just in case you're thinking, I wish I had 2,160 gallons of diesel on board. We should talk just briefly about what you give up on a boat that has this much fuel. Because it's not free. What you give up is living space. So I've often described Sea Venture to people as the biggest boat that only comfortably sleeps two you will ever seem to come across. Now, we have our V-Berth uh, that has two single bunks in it, and then our main cabin, and that's it. So the tankage takes up a lot of what would otherwise be living space. When you think about the capacity of the fuel tanks, it's the same as having four eight-person hot tubs inside the boat. And everyone has a sense of how big a hot tub is. Well, think of four of those in the boat with us and how much living space that takes. So there is definitely a trade-off when you want to have a long-range ocean-going trawler. All right, so what does all this fuel mean? Well, in theory, Sea Ventures range is about 4,800 nautical miles, but we're going to call that theory only, not reality. Because in reality, we're not going to use all our fuel. So we kind of cruise with this plan that we never are going to drop below 10% of our fuel load. So that's our 10% reserve, absolute minimum. We've actually never even got that close to that, but that would be our planned absolute minimum that we would want to run with. And 4,800 nautical miles would use up that reserve. It's also based on cruising at seven knots. So let's add in a 10% reserve. Let's reduce our speed to 6.5 knots, a little bit slower than average to account for current waves or anything else that may slow us up a little bit compared to the plan. And with those two uh, parameters, it puts us at about 4,007 nautical mile range, so basically 4,000 nautical miles. That's a good bit of range. Not that you would want to, but I used our charting and figured out, you know, if you really wanted to go 4,000 miles without stopping, what could you do? Well, you could go from Seattle to the Panama Canal without stopping. You could go from Seattle cruise right past Hawaii on your way to French Polynesia without stopping. You could be in Eastern Australia and cruise all the way to Hawaii without stopping. You could go from Western Australia across the Southern Indian Ocean to South Africa. You could go from South Africa to Brazil. You could go from Florida all the way across the Atlantic to Gibraltar without stopping. And you could even go from Seattle to Japan via the Aleutian Islands in Alaska, all without stopping. I don't think you'd actually want to do any of those unless you really enjoyed being in the ocean. For us, it's about meeting people and culture and all those things. So, you know, our normal cruising is we stop everywhere. But the long range allows us to cherry pick where we buy fuel, which can be really critical when you're looking at the cost. But it's what, to give you some examples, what you could do with Sea Venture or a comparable ocean going trawler if you wanted to. Hey, thanks for watching this first Tech Talk, which we'll put into a new playlist for Tech Talks. Remember the disclaimer from the beginning we're not experts in anything, just relaying our experience of, and what we do on Sea Venture. So, the next video we do is going to be a pretty short video. I wanted to provide everybody an update on the drone status uh, for Sea Venture. And if you've watched our videos, you'll know what we're talking about when we talk about drones. So, I wanted to give you a little update on the drone status and uh, what the plan is for the upcoming cruising year. The next Tech Talk we do will be on uh, keeping track and organizing and how we chose what kind of spare parts to have on Sea Venture. We have about 600 different spare parts on board Sea Venture. And that's a little bit of effort required to select those parts, get those parts, organize those parts, know where they are, know what you have and know what you don't have. So that's going to be the next little tech talk. The refit series is, con is continuing and when we have enough content 
for the next uh, episode. We will uh, wrap that up and get that out there as well. It's all going well in case you're, you're wondering. And um, and also, you know, I just wanted to relay because we've been doing this refit series, now the Tech Talks and stuff. Uh, hopefully we're going to get this refit done. I'm looking forward to going boating and getting back to some videos of just cruising and enjoying uh, the beautiful area that we have here. We are working on planning the summer of 2018, spring summer of 2018 cruise. I think we plan to be gone for four and a half months. It's going to include some ocean passages. So look forward to that coming up. And uh, so I think that's about it for now. So wishing you a no wind and flat seas and, and, uh, and a great December.